When we were out uh, in America talking to all the people about this mission before, long before liftoff, a little while before liftoff, in fact, I was lucky enough to get onto the Iwo Jima and he's still in harbour in San Diego. And there I talked to Commander Chuck Smiley, that's the man who is in charge, the pilot of Helicopter 66, the man whose ultimate responsibility it is to fly that helicopter in. Every astronaut who's been to the moon has been lifted aboard his recovery ship on this helicopter, 66. Commander Smiley, you flew the helicopter on one of those recovery missions, didn't you? That's right, Jim. On Apollo 10, I was the recovery helicopter pilot. My predecessor, Commander Jones, affected the recoveries of Apollo 8 and 11, and my present executive officer piloted this same aircraft when he recovered the astronauts from Apollo 12. So you know the helicopter pretty well? I feel I know it pretty well. What is so special about Helicopter 66 that it's always used to bring these these recovery operations to a conclusion? I think Helicopter 66 probably typifies this particular type of helicopter. Originally, the precedent was set on uh, 66 by uh, Commander Jones on Apollo 8 when it just happened to be what we in the Navy refer to as a go bird. It happened to be a particularly a good flying aircraft. However, this particular type of aircraft is, uh, is well suited for affecting uh, Apollo recovery missions because of the a very sophisticated electronics package that it has, which gives it a quite uh, a marked uh, stability as opposed to that that's uh, normally expected of a helicopter. This H3 type helicopter has some unique capabilities that I think I'll be able to better explain uh, later on as we look at another part of the helicopter. What sort of problems do you have going in to get astronauts out of the water? Do you fly in formation? Uh, do, are you very careful about who gets in the way of who? Is there a script for the whole thing? Yes, I, I, I would say that's, that's an accurate statement. Actually, it's almost like a, a ballet exercise. We have a total of uh, five aircraft, uh, five helicopters airborne at that time, a, a relay, uh, communications relay helicopter, a photographic helicopter. That's we the have, one that's uh, going to have live television on board this time. Yes, that's correct, and that will be a first for this, uh, for this mission. We have two uh, helicopters that contain uh, frogmen, and finally the fifth helicopter, uh, this recovery helicopter. And if Chief Slider will commence rigging our Billy Pugh net, I can go into some of the details of the actual recovery uh, operation. The Billy Pugh net, of course, has become famous by virtue of the astronaut uh, recoveries. But I mentioned earlier the particular capabilities that this helicopter has, or this type of helicopter. From this position right back here, where Chief Slider will be standing during the operation, he can actually affect a certain degree of control over the flight of this helicopter. That is to say, he can control it with 11 knots of authority in any direction. I mean, the pilot keeps it in the air, and then the chief moves it laterally or forward or backwards. That's correct. I think if we, if we think of it in terms of being a fine trim that's exercised over the flight of the aircraft, so that standing in this position and looking straight down, he can put the fine tuning, so to speak, to position us directly over the uh, command module and the, uh, and the retrieval raft. Once this is done, then, Petty Officer Lange, who's on Chief Slider's right, will lower this Billy Pugh net down to the frogmen. The frogmen will assist the astronauts in, in getting into the Billy Pugh net, seating themselves well towards the back, and then Petty Officer Lange will control this hoist to raise the astronauts at about a foot per second to bring them individually up to this cargo door where they're taken inside the helicopter. And that's what we hope will happen very soon now. We're now coming to the moment, the last moments of Apollo 13 as it comes in, as it begins its re-entry. The best thing we can do now is just to listen and hope. The last few seconds down to re-entry. At this point, there's very little anybody can do, including the astronauts, except wait as they come in through the up, uppermost fringes of the Earth's atmosphere. The computers put them on course. All anybody can do now is cross their fingers. Houston, uh, we've just had loss of signal uh, from uh, Honeysuckle. Uh, and they are coming in faster than predicted. They're coming in just about as fast as any spacecraft has returned from space before. 
the last few seconds now to re-entry and they've lost them on the main radio contact antenna in Australia at Honeysuckle Creek. Just about now, they should be going through the moment of maximum heat. And we'll only know whether or not that heat shield was damaged by the explosion three days ago when they come out of radio blackout in just over two minutes. About 30 seconds to go to the end of radio blackout About now. 30 seconds to go uh, for blackout. Less than 10 seconds now. Uh, we will attempt to uh, contact Apollo 13 uh, through one of the Araya aircraft. Continuing to monitor this Apollo Control Houston. with the OK Joe. Correction there, that was command module pilot Jack Swagger. We're looking at the weather on TV and it looks just as advertised, real good. Less than two minutes now from time of drogue deployment. That drogue deployment that he's talking about is the point at which the very small parachutes come out that then drag up the main parachutes. They have been seen before those drogue parachutes come out on previous missions, but today all we can be certain of is that everybody's watching for those small red and white parachutes to come out to signal the final safety stage of this flight. The main parachutes. Let's not anticipate. But the heat shield obviously worked. You should see something any time now. Odyssey Houston, uh, standing by for your uh, now 67. Uh, when you get it, over. The shoot should be out. A report of uh, two good drogues coming up now for main shoots. <laughs> 